Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand for us and gold fundamental and technical analysis. And let's jump straight into the week ahead. So 19th of June. Um, in the United States, the spotlight will be on speeches by several Fed officials, including Chair Jerome Powell's testimony before Congress. Investors will also closely uh, follow flash PMI services and manufacturing readings, as well as housing data such as housing starts, building permits and existing home sales. It will be a busy week in the United Kingdom with the Bank of England's interest rate decision, as well as releases from the inflation rate, retail sales and customer confidence. Additionally, you've got central banks in China, Switzerland, um, rest we don't necessarily look at um, and they're detailing uh, the course of their monetary policy elsewhere inflation rates will be uh, released in japan so finally flash pmis for june will offer a first look into economic conditions in australia japan the uk the euro area germany and france so um lots to look forward to a bit light on the us news but some important um, data coming out uh, elsewhere, especially for the UK. So moving on to some technicals and um, some more in-depth fundamentals. So um, the dollar this week, what did we see? We saw Jerome Powell indicate that at least two more rate hikes are, uh, are coming. Um, after they actually uh, paused, which is, I guess it was considered a skip or a pause. And it says official lifts, officials lift forecast for rates, growth, uh, core inflation and Fed signals break from string of increases likely to be brief. And so uh, Federal Reserve officials paused their series of interest rate hikes, but projected borrowing costs will go higher. So interest rates are going to go higher than previously expected, owing to what Chair Jerome Powell called surprisingly persistent inflation and labour market strength. And so it was considered a, a hawkish hold. Um, but the market actually didn't believe the Federal Reserve, right? And so you've seen this week, you know, from a technical uh, price perspective, uh, the dollar actually uh, decrease uh, in value, depreciate. And this was also driven by um, some other news that came out, which was inflation related. I think it was, um, was it PPI, uh, producer prices index? And I think there was um, jobs as well, or unemployment uh, came in a bit higher in the same week that the Federal Reserve uh, were hawkish, right? And so what that pretty much means is that the the data needs to support the narrative. So if the economy is slowing um, and inflation is coming down to the 2% target, then it means that they're actually less likely to hike. And so the Fed can kind of say now that they're hawkish and that they're expecting maybe two more rate hikes. But if the data doesn't support that narrative, then it's pretty much, you know, the market's not going to believe what the Fed is saying, you know, today and they're going to price that in, right? Or they're not going to price in uh, the hikes, which is basically what, what what's happened. So uh, to summarize, I guess, um, that sentiment and what Bloomberg economists say is that they interpret this dot plot as as a jawboning tool. And jawboning is like uh, that moral suasion. So central banks, what they do is they try to talk up the um, the currency. So what they'll say is they try to uh, get the market to do the bidding before they actually uh, do hike uh, or cut. And so if they want the market actually, and they want prices to go higher or lower, then what they'll signal to the market is they'll say, oh, we're thinking about hiking. And that's basically, uh, or use language, hawkish language to try to get the market to anticipate that they're going to hike, pushing prices to where they want prices to, you know, that may help inflation or deflation, depending on whether they want to, you know, be uh, hawkish or dovish. Um, and get the market to move prices. And that is what is called jawboning without actually moving um, uh, or, or tinkering with interest rates. And so they're signaling to the market that they are hawkish, but whether they are or not is another, you know, is another thing. So, you know, basically that's what the uh, Bloomberg economists are thinking is that they are just jawboning and talking up or um, the, uh, the, 
the dollar um, and it basically is a way for the Fed to preempt further easing in financial conditions in response to its rate pause, even if the additional tightening is unlikely to be fully delivered. And so they say that we believe that inflation will likely be lower than um, these projections by year end and ultimately the Fed will hike less than what the new dot plot indicates right and this is from anna wong stewart paul and eliza winger and they are economists now goldman sachs have a different um view on it goldman says uh, that markets are too optimistic on the pace of u.s uh, inflation drop and strategists watching impact of energy prices and pace of growth and fomc is still concerned about persistent price increases so inflation in the u.s won't come down as quickly as markets are currently pricing according to strategists at goldman sachs group um and so this is really the uh the, the, the chart and the uh, it says markets appear considerably more optimistic than we are about the pace of inflation normalization. So you see the market implied um, inflation coming down and then you also see Goldman Sachs's forecast in blue and they think that inflation is likely to, um, you know, stay um, a bit stickier, right? And so, uh, one second, let me go back. And it said, they say, although we expect further declines in inflation going forward, markets appear considerably more optimistic than we are about the pace of cooling, the strategist said. And um, it says, Fundstrat uh, head of research Tom Lee said that in a note Friday that price increases could ease off potentially this year and possibly amid a drop in the shelter in the shelter or rent component of the consumer price index, the stock market is beginning to come around to that way of view uh, and probably explained much of the gains the year to date is said. Oh, that wasn't what I wanted to read, but um, mm, 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 where was it now? What did I miss it? Uh, All right, it says uh, here, investors could be assume, assuming that a sharp deceleration in growth will lead to a more rapid easing of price pressures and tending to be more bearish on energy prices than what is implied by commodities futures strategists led by Praveen um, wrote on uh, in a note on Friday. They see, they see limited ability for those things to lower prices and say markets are also ignoring the potential for delayed onset inflation in sectors like healthcare. Anyways, the, um, you know, Goldman Sachs pretty much believe that uh, inflation may not, you know, will maybe stickier than uh, anticipated. So it's all about data and when the data comes out. So if the data supports a rate hike, meaning inflation is remains sticky, it doesn't come down or stays as it is or goes higher, then in fact that proves that the Fed is right, and you'll have, um, you know, the, uh, the they're likely to hike, which would then mean that um, the dollar is likely to be supported. Uh, but if not, then um, and inflation is actually seen as coming uh, down, like some economists predict, then pretty much any pullbacks are shorting opportunities, right? And so um, it really just depends on, you know, how the market um, uh, uh, see uh, the, the, uh, and interpret the data. So the dollar is a bit of a, bit of a, um, uh, in a bit of no man's land at the moment. Again, it's just more data dependent. So um, dollar yen and the, um, the dollar yen, again, although the dollar is in a, again, a bit of a precarious position um, and the markets don't necessarily believe their hikes, uh, the Bank of Japan is this week stayed very uh, dovish, only central bank really to remain um, dovish. And so, um, and not really high rates, and so, um, and not looking to high rates soon anyway. So, the Bank of Japan holding rates, possible yield curve control adjustment in July, but Ueda, the Bank of Japan governor, is still remaining quite dovish. So, uh, with that being said, what you've got, in fact, is um, more uh, hawkishness for the dollar and any pullbacks should be buying opportunities um, if you subscribe to uh, you know the interest rate divergence trade idea so any pullbacks into these zones i think are going to be decent for a uh, for a long trade uh, the problem is though is that the weaker the yen becomes is the more the central bank uh, the bank of japan are likely to um 
to want to intervene. And so uh, we look at this um, this article as well, talking about the yen carry trade. And um, it says carry trade yen carry traders cheer raiders softly softly approach to Bank of Japan. So Japanese yen is the only negative yield among 31 currencies. No change to Bank of Japan's negative rate policy expected in 2023. And so um, uh, this is basically the um, where the carry trade is where. I shall read it from here. It says carry trades take advantage of the difference in interest rates between two economies to borrow where uh, the rate is low and invest where it is high. So while speculation lingers, the Bank of Japan may tweak its yield curve control program this summer to make it more sustainable. The rate's commitment to negative rates is what is key for any carry strategy involving the yen. And so they just borrow the yen at a cheaper rate, invest it in you know, higher yielding currencies like the dollar, the New Zealand dollar, the pound, um, and make money on the difference, right? And so, um, you know, with that, you know, you're seeing a lot of the yen pairs, if it's, you know, euro yen, pound yen, you're seeing pretty much parabolic moves, right, to the upside, not so much on the dollar, but um, on those other um, currencies where the central banks are a lot more hawkish, you're seeing lots of upside. So um, I would in the short term, at least expect the hawkishness to continue. Um, one, four, fives are seen as the area where prices may want to kind of turn around, to be fair. Um, that, that, that's kind of been like the line in the sand uh, from several banks. So one, four, five, one, four, sixes could be a really nice uh, shorting area. But let's see. I think the path of least resistance is still to the upside as, you know, as, as kind of, you know, negative sentiment on the dollar um, has been against other currencies. I think against the yen, it should continue to move higher and any pullbacks are shorting opportunities. Uh, pound, sorry, dollar Swiss. Uh, again, dollar pretty much selling off this week. And um, there are uh, some shorting opportunities uh, looking for any kind of pullbacks into supply. If you want to be a buyer of the uh, Swiss franc, of course, the Switzerland, the Swiss National Bank are looking to hike this week and continue hiking, matter of fact. And so, um, yeah, they are quite hawkish. So any pullbacks, I think, are uh, buying opportunities or shorting opportunities um, with regards to the uh, Swiss franc. But again, data dependency, um, if there's data supporting the economy, on for the for the dollar as well as um, uh, uh, interest rates and inflation, then you could see a decent buy. In fact, at those eighty-eight to fifty cent uh, levels. So um, so yeah, there's that uh, dollar CAD and the dollar CAD again dollar selling off, and then when you have a central bank like the Canadian dollar who are continuing to hike rates or seen as continuing hiking rates. And you've got the Federal Reserve who have uh, who have paused. Again, it's no wonder you know you see prices continue falling. Any pullbacks if you want to be a buyer of the Canadian dollar versus the U.S. dollar, I think that's going to be a really nice uh, buy. You do have a decent area of demand technically um, in and around this one three one area, but uh, again, you, to buy that you definitely need some um, or for prices to kind of move to the upside. You need sustainably you'd need um the dollar um uh, to have some decent uh data to support it moving on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar um this was a supply zone and i always say this if you've been watching me long enough is that there's no technical level that's going to stand in the way of uh, fundamental analysis this is the reason why um, we use fundamental analysis to kind of pick and choose levels and directions right and the direction that we want to trade in at no point you know there's lots of traders that would have tried to get short here and not understanding why you would want to get short if you know the fundamentals and risk sentiment doesn't support that right it doesn't support it didn't never support it so you know you stay out of that trade going short and so uh, you've seen uh, the pound really just go from strength to strength and pull back to the nearest demand zone is all the way down here. So um, yeah, if, you, if you're just looking at daily demand zones, then you've got a long way to go. Uh, 
for a pullback into uh, into this level before looking at long trades. Of course, there, there are options as well uh, that could play out where you have a pullback um, and then you have prices make new highs and then you'd wait for a pullback into um, a higher low. Or you could have a scenario where you have uh, prices pull back a little bit, then they make lower lows, then make a new high break in that previous high there then that creates that demand zone around here and then you get that move to the upside there so um many different ways that this could play out doesn't mean that prices have to pull back all the way down to these uh 26 uh one dollar 26 areas um you know you could see that play out as well but uh looking at the uk uh, the headline is that britain faces recession and flood of job losses if rates hit six percent investors are betting on rates peaking uh, near two decade higher so that's um, actually um, uh, supporting the pound at the moment they're one of the hawkish central banks and the market is pricing in a lot of uh, well, a lot more rate hikes and a lot more than the uh, than the US anyway, and borrowing costs now a bigger drain uh, for households than energy. And uh, one of the, uh, um, I guess, effects of hiking rates is that it contracts the economy. It, it raises borrowing and lending costs, hurts businesses, you know, uh, mortgage repayments. And if people have got less money in their pockets because they've got, you know, more um, on their mortgages, then, um, you know, it hurts the economy, especially if, you know, you're a services, more of a services economy and you need retail sales because, you know, people are going to um, rather keep the money in their pocket and um, or can't even afford to, you know, spend and eat out and buy, you know, things and invest in the, I say invest, but spend in the economy um, because they're paying such high mortgage rates, right? And so uh, that's the downside really to uh, the pound in, in over the next maybe couple, uh, maybe medium term. I wouldn't say even short term, but um, I would say probably uh, near to mid term. Um, you're starting to see this um, happen. And if you start to see again the data support the narrative that, that the economy is actually contracting, then um, I think the pound has reached its peak. And I think the central bank will actually see that as well and start to think, you know what, we can't raise interest rates as much as, you know, we maybe thought. And so, uh, you know, 6% seems to be the number where um, there's going to be, a you know, quite a lot of pain coming into the economy. But I think for now, uh, the the um, the move is to the upside. Of course, you don't want to buy at highs. You're waiting for a pullback um, and then, um, yeah, into into some sort of zone or let the zone create also as well one of you know when the bank of england release or, or i guess um yeah announce their the, what, what they're hiking and how much they're hiking uh take note of the speech afterwards and if they're hawkish or dovish also as well there is cpi uh this week coming out in fact uh, it should be on here let's see what day it is uh, building permits, uh, sorry, inflation year on year. So that's on the 21st. So that's going to be a critical, critical day um, for um, for the uh, Bank of England and the interest rates and how hawkish or dovish they are. And then you've got Bank of interest, in, Bank of Bank of England interest rate decision the day after. So uh, so yeah, let's see what happens with the uh, with the pound. And also just a reminder that the uh, supply and demand course content and fundamental analysis mentoring is going to be open um, tomorrow. Actually, I say tomorrow, but um, uh, on Monday, the 19th of June. And so um, if you have been waiting to enroll, that is going to be your chance. It's going to be open for a limited time only, only for about five days. Um, if you want to add fundamental analysis to your trading and uh, learn really high level supply and demand trading strategies as well as um, stop hunting and just really get um, high level mentoring, then you can uh, join. Then you get access to the fundamental analysis spreadsheet where I share my uh, fundamental biases as well as uh, my trading videos. And a lot of these trading videos I don't release to YouTube. They are for 
um, the members only. So um, just to let you know, just to show you that you've got, you know, the 17th of June weekly supply and demand technical analysis. So these are technical analysis where I go in depth on um, the pairs that I'm looking to trade, all the trade setups you've got. I've got hundreds of videos here. Also as well, you get access to the Wednesdays live call where every Wednesday I have a Zoom call where you, you know, basically you do Q and A, we do Q and A's. I tell you what my bias is and why we go over charts and it's your opportunity to really kind of ask questions and get mentoring with me. Um, where I show you pretty much, um, you know, uh, what to do and how to really approach the markets. And you get um, as well, which is uh, access to the trading um, mentoring discord channel, where we've got a great bunch of traders. Um, check out uh, the YouTube mentoring videos where uh, traders give their feedback on the service as well. Um, you can check that out on the YouTube channels. And so, yep, 19th uh, enrollment opens in, uh, in, in, a, in a couple of days. So uh, going back to the charts. So let's look at the Euro dollar and the Euro dollar. And um, yeah, so we've had the Euro were very hawkish this week. We had um, ECB hawks warned rate hikes may need to persist beyond the summer. So now what's happening is, is that the um, they already basically hiked. Christine Lagarde was very hawkish. And then um, now they're actually pricing in potentially September's uh, rate hikes, which is, uh, which is interesting. But what it does, it adds to the... Um, the fact that the European Central Bank are very, uh, very hawkish, even in the face of a recession, which is, uh, which is a bit crazy to me. But um, the market is basically ignoring the recession uh, uh, talk and pretty much just looking at it from the perspective of who is uh, more hawkish. And so you've seen that basically in the market again no supply zone is going to stand in the way there's no uh, resistance zone that's going to stand in the way of uh, of the market revaluing uh, price and this is what we've seen so just updating the uh, the chart and you've got a demand zone there as well so any pullbacks to um, this area here is going to be decent if you're looking to buy the euro zooming out i mean this is a decent area to actually look for shorts if 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 the excuse me if the um if the data supports actually a hawkish fed so i can't imagine well i can imagine it uh but um in the short term um unless you know we can kind of break through this supply zone but really only if there's a situation where um the the, the data doesn't support the euro sorry the dollar um uh, strengthening and so um, as the market kind of prices out or doesn't price in uh, two rate hikes then you're going to see prices go to the upside as well as obviously the the European Central Bank being hawkish but they are also at the kind of the mercy as well of um, the economy or their economy because the ECB faces narrow path to avoid hard landing IMF chief says and European Central Bank should keep focus on reducing inflation which is which is their uh, their main focus and Georgieva uh, says 90% of advanced economies are slowing down because again as I said before the more you hike is the more um, you tend to contract the economy. And if you're already in a recession, a technical recession, and you're hiking, then you could actually make things worse. So, and you're likely to make things worse. And so um, it is a bit of a strange one um, from an, an economics perspective, uh, why uh, the European Central Bank would continue to hike. I mean, I understand they're trying to get inflation down and that's the priority. But I think um, by the end of the year, in fact, if um, the those rate hikes have a detrimental effect to the economy, in fact, I don't know whether uh, prices will go, even though there are targets for you know the 112s, 115s. Um, I'm not too sure whether that will happen, but let's see. Um, for now, though, in the short term, you know, the sentiment 
is to buy the euro. The market is pretty much saying buy euro, buy euro, buy euro. So any pullbacks are going to be decent buying opportunities. If you get down to the 108s, not too sure whether that will happen. Again, similar to uh, the pound dollar where you might get a higher, higher, higher low and then a pullback. That would be a buy or you might get lower highs, lower lows and then a break and then a pullback. And then you're looking for a buy trade there. If you're looking to buy the dollar and be um, uh, counter to the uh, to pretty much general sentiment, then you're looking at um, this supply zone here as a decent area to look for uh, any short trades. Looking at the euro dollar and again, sorry, euro yen. And again, you can see the, the difference between um, central bank divergence playing out on a chart where the European Central Bank are very hawkish, yet the um, the Bank of Japan are not, right? And so you're seeing that play out. You need a, pretty much a 500, 600 pip uh, pullback in order for you to get long on this um, from a daily demand zone perspective. So um, doesn't look like that's going to happen anytime soon unless there's some major news uh, that comes out from Japan. Um but yeah, where we are, again, very similar to the, uh, in fact, exactly the same as uh, the pound uh, dollar or maybe like the uh, euro dollar where you need to see higher highs being made um, or pullback down into the lows or you're looking at lower highs, lower lows being made, a break above and then a pullback into that demand zone before looking at getting long. Other than that, I can't see reason why you'd want to get short on that um on that yen um unless you're trying to anticipate yield curve control a bit early but that's going to be a very tricky trade to be fair um uh, for you to get involved in uh euro pound euro pound going lower and lower and um i think with the euro pound it is um i think the pound is is um slightly stronger than the uh, say slightly but it's seen as being stronger than the um than the euro and really for the, the main reason for that is <coughs> i think it's because the pound has um has got a better economy pretty much they're not in a recession and so although the the, the ecb are hawkish you've got a better economy in the uk at the moment but also as well um the uh, higher they, they got higher inflation and so um i think the the the, the banks are quite um are pricing in a bit more hikes than expected uh, from the bank of england so that's basically what's happening so if you continue to want to be uh short on the euro pound then you're looking at i think the 108 uh, sorry, the 0 0.862s are going to be really nice for a, a short or basically back up into uh, these uh, 0 0.87 area. Again, that all depends on what happens um, this week. If inflation comes out higher than expected, then pretty much the central bank are going to end up hiking more uh, or they expected to hike more, which then means that you're going to see or you should see um, the British pound actually start to... Um, uh, appreciate against uh, the euro not necessarily you know massive increases because you do have um, two central banks that are hiking right and when you get two central banks that are hiking um, prices do tend to auction but um, you can just get more of a slower grind lower or higher depending on which one the market uh, prefers to buy or sell if you are looking to buy the euro, then you're really looking at the next demand zone. It's going to be all the way down into the 84.50s before looking at getting long. Uh, the Australian dollar, US dollar, uh, gone from strength to strength. Um, again, was I think last week we were looking for a bit of a pullback. If you were looking to buy the Australian dollar, it didn't happen. And prices have basically broken through that supply zone. And the more times the level is touched, by the way, which has been touched like once, twice, three times, um, the weaker it becomes because it's no longer really a bargain anymore. And um, and so uh, with with a weaker sentiment uh, against the uh, the US dollar, but also as well um, the um, the Australian dollar, the RBA. Central Bank of Australia were quite uh, hawkish as well. Uh, they had a surprise hike, um, was it last week? And so pretty much um, what you're seeing is the effect of, again, two central banks, at least in the short term, uh, 
you know, di uh, diverge where one central bank has kind of held rates and the other, and, and the market doesn't believe that they will hike as much as they say they are. Whereas you've got the RBA who are hiking rates and the market believes that they're going to hike rates more, right? So that's the reason why you're seeing this move. So um, any pullbacks into demand, decent for a, uh, a uh, buy trade. Um, again, very similar to um, the other uh, pairs that I've mentioned with regards to the uh, the fact that if you don't get, you know, when you get this large pullback, you may have to wait for higher highs, higher lows, or um, you know, certain you know similar patterns. Also, as well, um, if you believe that the uh, dollar actually could be a decent buy up here technically, but again, the data would have to support that narrative. You can't just you know look to buy the uh, or or short this pair without. Um, uh, anticipating that there's going to be some good news or some decent news for the uh, for the US dollar, although this move has gone quite parabolic, so I would expect some profit taking at least at some of these levels before prices go to downside. Uh, I think also as well, Jerome Powell's um, uh, uh, speech could actually be a turning point um, around here, depending on how hawkish he is. And gold, finally gold. Um, gold has been in this auction for a while now. Let me just get rid of some of this analysis. I was saying this last week. Um, and there was a really nice stop hunt. I think one of the guys got involved in this. Um, it was a really nice trade, in fact. Let me see if I can find it. One second. Yeah, so here it was. So, uh, you know, Spencer uh, got a little stop hunt on gold. So, yeah, really nice uh, trade. So this is where he got involved and the uh, price has um, gone higher, it looks like. So, yeah, really nice. don't know what time frame that was, but like maybe a lower time frame. Somewhere like maybe the hourly or something. Yeah, so nice, 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 nice managed to get involved and then prices went to the upside anyways um yeah where we are now of course you know we're at the, we were at the bottom of this demand zone so prices kind of bounced along if you're expecting uh, the dollar to actually go um to get weaker then you would have to look for gold to go um higher if you're expecting the dollar to um get stronger and appreciate then in fact this supply zone could be a really nice supply zone to look for shorting of gold um any recession talk is going to be uh buying opportunities for gold i think um if the economy starts to contract um further and uh, signs of slowing down and inflation coming down and the federal reserve is is not looking to hike then gold should be you know the buy as it typically um, moves in the opposite direction to the dollar so uh, those are really where your levels are um at the moment and so yeah um a uh a decent uh uh trade uh on that on that stop hunt anyways guys i hope you had um a great trading week and i hope you have a great trading week and don't forget that if you do want to be mentored by myself uh the um trading 180 mentoring opens on monday the 19th i look forward to working with you Anyone who sent me uh, also as well any emails, if I haven't got back to you, um, I apologize. I don't know what's happened. I think I've had some uh, some issues with my uh, email coming through from my website. And so some people have mo emailed me multiple times and it hasn't come through. And so um, and then they email me directly and then it's like, oh, I haven't received it. So if I haven't received it, I apologize. I'm going to go through them again and try and find exactly where they are. And get back to you ASAP. So, guys, I hope you have a great trading week. I look forward to working with you if you do want to join the mentoring group. It's only open for about five days, and then that's it for maybe until maybe October, November. It depends. Anyways, guys, take care. Speak to you soon. All the best.